All right, here we go. See if this works. Light turn green. We have a projection right here. Ever since I started posting van build videos on YouTube, the number one question I always get is about solar power. How does it work? How am I able to run electronics like TVs, PlayStations, tools, etc.? It's a lot more simple than you think it is. I'm going to build a solar system start to finish right here on this video. So I'd say that's a pretty good introduction. Let's get into it right now. Before I actually do the installation process, I need to make sure that everybody totally understands exactly how solar power systems work before we continue. This is what's known as a solar panel. This device right here does not give you unlimited electricity. Now, I just have to say that because people usually ask me, hey, yo, bro, if you got a solar panel on the roof, then why do you need to use propane for a cooker and for a heater? That makes no sense, bro. Well, I'm not exactly sure why you need to use the word bro before and after every sentence, but to simply answer your question, let's say that you're running a heater. Most heaters end up running about 10 amps per hour or so. And if this solar panel is only bringing in five amps per hour, you're gonna be using that for an extremely limited amount of time before your power just runs out. To use more specific numbers in that explanation, you need to understand that a 100 watt solar panel usually brings in five amps per every hour of direct sunlight. See, the truth is solar panels are really just a method of capturing energy from the sun, raw energy. The raw energy that's captured from these solar panels is not actually usable as regular electricity. Once the energy is captured by this solar panel, then you need other devices in order to store that raw power and convert it into usable energy. So this right here is a battery. This is also a battery. This big one is a 200 amp hour deep cycle battery. And this is a spare motorcycle battery. Let's just say it's, I don't know, 20 amp hours. Both of those batteries will actually work in a solar system, but you'll get two extremely different results depending on which one you use. Like I was saying earlier, let's say that your solar panel brings in five amps every hour and you have a 20 amp hour battery. So you can charge up that battery to 100% capacity within four hours. And if my math is right and you're using the other battery, the 200 amp hour battery, then you'd be able to charge that one to 100% in about 40 hours. 40 hours of sunlight, by the way. Then you can use that power that's stored in the battery to run your electronics, whatever they might be. If you use a heater that utilizes 20 amps in one hour, that would drain your 20 amp hour battery immediately. Whereas if you use the big heavy 200 amp hour battery, then you'd be able to run that for a number of hours before your battery drained all the way down to zero. Generally speaking, the more amp hours you have in your battery, the more electricity you will be able to use at any given time. And the more solar panels you use, the faster they will be able to charge those batteries. In my last van build, I only had one solar panel on the roof and I wanted to add more charging capacity. So I actually hooked up the battery to the vehicle alternator as well so that while the car was on, that would charge the battery as well as the solar panels charging the battery while there's sunlight. Also keep in mind that if you wanted to add amp hours to your battery system, all you would need to do is connect two different batteries together and then you can add their amperage together. There are different types of batteries that you can get, but that those concepts are kind of beyond the scope of this video. This is kind of more just introductory trying to explain the entire system to you. Now those are the main components of it, but there's two pieces to this system 
that I did not say anything about yet, but they are extremely important. This first device here is a solar controller. And basically what that does is while the solar panels are pulling in the raw power, that power needs to be regulated before it goes into the battery so that the battery doesn't get damaged. That's probably the best way I can explain what this does. You connect your solar panels to this device, then it does whatever it does, and then the output is for the battery and it'll feed the power from the panel to the battery. And this other device here is what's known as an inverter. Now what this does is it takes the direct current power that's stored in your battery and it lets it be used in regular electronic applications. And let me explain by showing you on this side of the inverter, there's actually regular in-house AC plugs right here. There are different types of solar controllers and there are different types of inverters but that's really beyond the scope of this video if you guys want me to do more videos on these topics to explain the different types of things that you can use in your system then just comment that and let me know and now that we have the entire system explained now we can get into actually installing it and then using it to try to run a few different things and see what happens but for my installation i'm going to be using this renogy solar starter kit which basically has everything you need inside of it the only thing it doesn't have is a battery for my build i'll be using two solar panels and i'll be wiring them in parallel for those of you who don't know if you're going to be wiring together multiple solar panels or multiple batteries together there's two different ways you can wire them one is called series and the other is called parallel so i'm going to be wiring my stuff in parallel and that means negatives connect to negatives, positives connect to positives, and then they go into the battery. And that way, it'll make it so that if you have two 100 watt panels, then they will come together to make a total of 200 watts of solar that's going to be going into your battery. This next section is gonna be voiced over because it was windy as f outside. And as you can see, the first thing I did was place my two solar panels on the roof where I wanted them to be mounted. Next, I did a parallel wiring of the two solar panels. That means that I took the negatives and put them together into one connector, and then I took the positives and put those together into another connector. And then after all of that, I was left with just one negative and one positive at the other end. Most solar panel kits that have two panels in the kit will come with these connectors already, so it'll be pretty easy. The next thing I did was take these brackets that also came in my kit and I connected those to the bottom of my panels so that I would be able to screw the panels into the roof of the van. Now when you're screwing your panels into your van, make sure to use some 100% waterproof silicone or caulking to cover up those holes so that you, there won't be any leaks and make sure you get underneath and on top of those brackets. So those panels were connected, I needed to drill a hole in the roof of the van so that I could feed down the positive and negative wires from the panels to where the battery was going to be mounted. Here I'm just connecting some extensions so that the wires will reach. If you're doing this the same way I am, no matter how many solar panels you're using, you should just have two wires coming from your roof from the panels, and one of them's a positive and one of them's a negative. Yeah, I could have told them that because I'm voicing over anyway. Thanks, me. Anyway, the next thing I did was cut out some more wood so I could use this as a back wall, and then I'm also going to be mounting the inverter and the solar controller and all that stuff to this. I also needed to just cover up this back wall anyway because it looked terrible. The solar controller was attached to the back wall. All I needed to do was bring down the positive and negative wires from the solar panel and attach those to the controller. I used some more wire to connect the solar controller to the battery itself. So the hard part is done and now you're just seeing me putting everything together and organizing these wires. At this 
point everything is hooked up it's actually nighttime right now so we're not pulling in any power from the sun but basically what's going on is the solar panels are pulling in the raw energy that energy is then going into this solar charge controller and then that is regulating the energy and storing the power in this giant battery then from the battery i have connected this power inverter and this is what's going to allow us to actually run appliances like regular household appliances so let's go test some of those out right now just to make sure it all works so here i've also installed this little battery accessory it's basically just monitoring the battery so it'll tell me what my current voltage is how many watts i'm using the amount of amps that are being used so what i'm actually going to do is plug an extension cord into one of these run it into the inside part of the van. Well, first off, there's a USB port right here, so I'm about to plug this in and charge my phone real quick. So I decided to test out a projector and a PlayStation, and I'm gonna project it onto this wall, and we're gonna see what this looks like. Now this projector and the PlayStation are hooked up to this extension cord right here, as you can see. But before I project it, before I actually turn everything on, let me walk around and show you guys where this extension cord is going because I know there's gonna be that dude in the comments that's gonna say, yo dude, you had that plugged into your house or something stupid, so here we go. This is the front of the van. This is the back of the van. Here's the extension cord right here. It's going straight up and into the living space. All right, here we go. See if this works. Light turned green. We have a projection right here. Turn this light off so we can see the screen better. Let me try to get it on the channel with the PlayStation. Oh, this is super blurry. I am turning the PlayStation on now. Oh, here we go. Off-grid solar power. That's how you do it. It's just funny because it has a wood background. But I'm literally standing outside right now. And there's a dude over there staring at me. <laughs> you can see the screen. Let's turn it off. So what you can see here is while I have these electronics running back here, I'm using 4.5 amps. Uh, you can see my voltage is going down and that's because you're using stuff. And these are the amount of watts that I'm currently using. So an easy way to explain how to read a gauge like this, pretty simple. Each one of these devices that you see that are currently still plugged in and turned on in rest mode is that each one of them uses a certain amount of amps per hour like I was saying. So if you have multiple things plugged in and on at the same time, then you have to add up their amperage to see what you're using at this given point in time. So I just showed you guys the, the my little amp reader back there, and it said I was using like four amps or five amps or something like that. Let's just use four for a good example. That means that like each one of these is using two amps while they're running. But then on top of that, you do need to worry about wattage. You just have to make sure that like you read the back of the boxes on the appliances that you're planning on using because it'll have the amount of watts that that device needs to, in order to run. And then you need to make sure that your inverter can support that amount of wattage. The only thing you're gonna have trouble with is stuff that produces heat or stuff that's made for cooking. Usually those use a lot of wattage and a lot of amps, so they're gonna drain your battery and more than likely your inverter is not gonna be able to support that. Unless you just end up spending a ton of money on a super expensive inverter, or a really big battery bank but most of you probably aren't going to do that let's just be real about it the last thing i need to talk about is dc power versus ac power so dc power is direct current and you can actually run devices straight up just dc power for example this roof vent that i installed has a fan in it and that fan actually you plug it directly into the battery and it just pulls the power out directly but these appliances right here 
are made for a regular house and most people in regular households do not run everything off of DC power. So that's why you need an inverter in order to change the power from direct current into being able to be used, you know, regular appliances like this. When you do use direct current, it's actually more efficient and you're gonna be using less power from your battery. But most of you aren't gonna get like DC power TVs and stuff like that, right? So certain things you're gonna end up just using your inverter for. And also the amount of power that you lose from using an inverter is really insignificant. People usually talk about it if they're more, you know, on the professional level. Anyway, now that's all I have for the video. I still have a lot of stuff to do in my own electrical setup, but I hope that this bare bones video at least gave you the knowledge that you were seeking before you watched it. If you go to my top link in the description, then you're going to see a link to my website. If you click on that, it's going to bring up a list of all of the products that I used in this video in case you wanted to use those same ones yourself. And everything can be found on Amazon. Thank you so much for watching and supporting the video, and I'll be seeing you guys in the next one. Later.